This application allows you to build just about any product that you want to. And in most cases, this may be a small business, not high production where you have a factory. Uh, it is where you have a hobbyist or a small uh, guy that is doing his own products and making them. It could be anything that you're building. In this particular case, the example record is this flag. And I just picked it because it is interesting. And so that's the product image that you would add here. You do that by clicking and either replacing the items in there or go out to the uh, photo library that you take with your uh, iPad or iPhone and take a picture of the item you're going to be making. Now, the overview of what this application and the production screen does is it allows you to pick from the inventory the major item that you're going to be building. Now, this would not be bits and pieces. This would be the completed full item that you're building. And in this particular case, I have this simple example where I have a flag. And this would probably be done with an airbrush and other kinds of paint in order to make this look like it does here. And there are people that can actually reproduce something that looks this good. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about the production itself. Each time you build an item, it gives it a unique ID number and it cycles for the next one you create. If you do a new one, come over and add a new record, it will do the next cyclic number to the one that is in the uh, current selection. Now I'm looking at record number one and there are actually four records in here so the next one would be item five or production ID number five. If I'm over here and I have an item that I've already generated one time and I have the information here and here that I want to reproduce, it will not re re reproduce the portal, but it will reduce, reproduce all this information here. So you click on duplicate and you'll get a new ID and a new record with this basic information here. Now understand when you're doing these here that the whole purpose of managing the required materials, the cost and the production notes and the fit and finish is that you're producing an item that may vary in cost and price and labor during its lifetime of manufacture. So for example, if you build 10 of these in one day and you have 10 records for each one of them, and the next week you build another one and the price for the item goes up, maybe the sheet metal goes up or down, it's going to affect the total price and the average price of what it costs you to produce this item. Now, what I would do if I'm running a business like this, I would go out and I would look do a Google search for the item I'm going to make or something similar to get a base cost of what this thing would might cost to build and or to produce at a retail or wholesale price. You need to be profitable so this information up here is quite important that you find the materials that are required and then you take the materials that are required and price them out so that you know what they're going to cost you when you produce the item. Uh, that way if you repeat the next time and you duplicate a record you may have to compare what you're going to build it with, what the costs are in that particular time span. And usually the notes are pretty much consistent. It's not going to be something you're going to have to vary on. Down here in the portal where I have the individual items that are going to take to build this, I've thrown in the same part number. And I'm going to explain why I did that. I don't have but two items currently in the, in the inventory. If you're building this item, you're going to have a number of items. And they're going to have different names and different part numbers and so forth. Uh, you need to flag those so that you know what they are and how they go into the end item. So when you come into this record and you're looking for the items that it takes to build it, you might want to put a little bit more narrative so that when you pull them down in the portal down here, you can look for the items that are in the portal that, in, that are included in the inventory that are take you have to use to build this item. Interestingly enough, as you're adding new inventory to the uh, inventory system, you want to update the pricing as to what it costs you so that when you're bringing them in this screen, you know what the cost is going to be based on the cost that is current. Okay, so now what I've done here is I've just repeated over and over again the same base item because I don't have any parts to make this. What you're going to have to do as you add your own new items is to create them in the inventory system and then bring them over here. And they would have a designation of a cost type of materials. In this screen, you've got materials labor, services, outside production, purchase, and salvage. Now what materials are, those are the pieces, parts, and things that take this to put together. Obviously labor is the time that it actually takes you to physically do something with labor. Services may be something where you're charging something for uh, something that you're going to add to your product and somebody else does it outside. And outside production is where maybe you have things 
uh, per uh, purchased as a part of the end item that you're doing. Say, for example, you buy, it might be materials, but to have it finished, you're doing outside production where somebody else is going to build part of it for you. Then there's a straightaway pur uh, purchase where you're going to go out and purchase an item and maybe do something to it to make it a little bit different and then sell it. Then there's salvage. Salvage is items that are taken from other items and removed. Say like you buy a uh, antique or a estate piece of jewelry and you want to remanufacture it because one of the stones is broken. Well, that would be a salvaged item on one line and then you would have the next line for the rest of the items. So in this case, if I had a salvage item, it might be a one-off time that I ever have it, but I would put something in the inventory system to identify that ID. Uh, or I might buy a whole bunch of items that are duplicates that I can pull out of the inventory system as well. Okay, let's take a look at what we're doing here. We did the, the cost type, and this is a buy or make decision. Either you're going to make this thing or you're going to buy it. That's where we were looking at the purchase where we talked about it on the last uh, pop-up. The quantity made, this is how many you're going to make as far as the item within this row for this row record. This may, quantity of items may be, for example, this might be, uh, I have one item, I'm going to build a bracelet, and it's made up of six stones. And I would have the name of the item in here as far as the type of material. Maybe it says amethyst, uh, 8 by 10, uh, and so forth. And then I would have maybe six of those. So this is the one that is actually used also in the math for the cost. If I put six stones in there and say they're $1.90 a piece, then I'm going to have a little bit more than $12 worth of materials. And if I put the cost in there for them $1.90 times, uh, say, 8, it's going to calculate it into the item sum for that row. Same thing with labor. If I'm doing labor and I figure it's going to take me four hours and what my labor rate would be, I'd put four times the labor rate and that would be my item sum for the labor. And that would be make instead of buy because you're always using labor in a make type situation. But the end of the product time would be one item finished with this particular thing that we're doing here. In this case, I put a typed in thing of either fabricate it and cut it, trim and finish, spray paint, and that could be with an airbrush to make this. And then down here, I just kind of left them. I didn't finish them. But basically, that's the kind of thing you're doing. Red paint, white paint, blue paint required over here. And if it's a vendor item, for example, if you're, you're buying it, then you would have a vendor part number and the material name from the vendor. So that if you buy it again for a new product, you have that product vendor and the part number and the price and everything already identified in one record where you can come back to it and then review it, look at the record you're currently working with, create a duplicate, then add that stuff back in here based on what the costs and materials are at the top of the screen. And if you're putting part numbers for the individual items up here in the cost materials, it's going to make you a lot easier for you to find the item individually. I would probably put the part number at the top and then the description below it and then the part number and then the description and so forth. I didn't take the time to do that in this record. And over here though, which it says in the notes, uh, you're going to go ahead and put the different things that it takes to build this. There's also fit and finish. If there are variations on the item that you're making, you're doing a bracelet and it has different kinds of clasps, and maybe one is polished and the other one's not, and one is silver and one is gold and so forth, that would be the variance in here and in the materials up here. Uh, it would main obviously be a different uh, in product part number, so you would have to have a different product part number, but it would help you to build the item if you understand what the fit and finish is going to be if it was made differently than another one. Okay, so we're looking here and we're talking about this is a kitting portal and it's used to track all kinds of elements required to make each item in used in including in the materials and labor. That's the whole goal of this individual item here. Well, in addition to that, you can have a pop-up here that actually shows you the stock location of this item if you have it stored somewhere and the date that you actually issued it to make it this thing and a picture of the item as well. In addition to that, if you're doing a fabrication where you're changing the way it is made or polishing it or doing whatever you're doing, you can have an image here that tells you how you're doing it you know, or what you're doing. So you have images and people learn faster from looking at images if they're repeating something that they would if they just looked at a narrative and tried to figure out how it was used and what, what tools were required to do it. Uh, 
you don't have to have uh, this be one of these rows be an actual cost item. You may want to just put in some information here that's informational about building it and have a photo of that particular image that you're using in order to identify what you're working with. Okay, so that's what this is doing in this area. Now it will take the item sum at the end of the row and calculate that value for each item that you're doing and then that would come up here to the average cost to make the item. Now once again, this is cost. You can go back to the inventory system for this particular item and figure what you want to make for a margin. And you would put that into the inventory system for the finished item by the part number that that is up here at this area. Okay, well that pretty well explains this screen. If you have any more questions, we'll contact us on the developer support. But we're going to continue on in this video and we're going to address the next thing, which is the production list view. The production list view in this screen is the main item that you're producing. The product cost, which is cost, the quantity that's being made, the required date, the completed date, and the sum build cost for that particular item. Now, if you look at this one, it says 3120 and 2290. That's very possible that that can happen. Then you're looking at the product ID over here, which tells you which record number that this actually pertains to. And obviously, if you have a finished part number over here and different item IDs, it's going to make it easier to, to differentiate which one is which. And then in the inventory system, the ID number is used in order to identify the actual barcode item and that individual item that was made in the production system. Now we're reusing this and you'll see it again on different screens that we're working with. Now you can do a find in here, enter into find mode, and actually select the ID as the item that you want to look up. Or you can look at dates, you can look at the uh, individual part number and see all of those by that part number. Or you may want to do something like a, a run of these. Maybe you did 10 runs of these and you can use omit and uh, then look at the omitted records to see what the comparison is between them and then view the individual record in the portal by clicking on the portal record. And the portal is the next thing we're going to be looking at. So you can either click there or you can click here to go to the portal. Here's the image that we were talking about that's on the end of the row. Plus it has the same information that's in the record. This one's the most important one here, the item quantity. As you change this, it's going to change the sum if you need to change it for whatever reason. Then you have your vendor part number and the stock location and date issued. Because if you're looking at these and you want to know which ones have actually been issued, you're going to want to know what date it was actually taken out of inventory and used. And that gives you an idea also as to what time period and what the cost may change over different periods of times. Some items that you buy are seasonal. They may have uh, cost that we're in their, their prime season and tourist season that they're more costly than they are in the winter time. And if you manufacture them in the winter time, trend analysis is going to take you and let you know that you're going to invest less if you build it in that particular period of time. Okay, let's get out of the portal. Now we're going to go to the production portal list view. And the production portal list view is actually the portal and the individual items in that portal. So in this particular case, we got three, four, five items in number one. And there are other ones in here. So if I did a find for number one, then I'm only going to be looking at the items for the number one record individually broken out. And I can go back in and I can look at those individual productions. And or if they're repeated, I can go back in and look at that portal to see why they're different from the original ones that we did up here. We got part number, cost type, make or buy, item uh, quantity, which is the how many of these times this equals this. And that's the cost and the item sum. And then down at the bottom of the screen, you're going to see the item sum. Now, the item sum is going to change based on which records you actually have in selection. So as you take one particular item, and maybe you want to look at, say, this, this one right down here, the 34.9, it's going to be $30 and then $30 would show down here. So you can see that it's going to vary by how many records you have in selection and what the record part number is at that time. So if I were doing a search and I wanted to look at this one, I'd do this part number, and then I would do the product ID for number one, and then it would show that and the total for it. So that's how you would do in the find. Let's go to the next item, uh, the production report. And the production report is more detailed in, if you wanted to print it out, it'll fit on a screen to print if you wanted to. And in this case, uh, believe it or not, if you're printing it, and you want to print it on a laser printer, it'll look fine. It'll work really well. But in a lot of 
printers, you can actually do color or and or you can tell it to do it in grayscale or black and white. And that way I'll put it in there in black and white so it makes it easy to see or print. Uh, color obviously would be the best time. You'll notice that it sorts these by part number at the top and then they, do, they break at the end. So here's part number for the next item at the end and so forth. They're summarized by sub-summaries for each different group and then they're grand summary at the bottom. So what grand summary would be if you had all the items for part number, this one here, for all the different times it was made and what production, then it would be a grand summary of what you made on that item over a period of time or what it costs you to make it. In this case, it's cost to make it. If you do it in the inventory report where it's the sales, you're going to see the sales report with a summary compared to what the cost report would be. So this is the build cost. The inventory system is going to give you your profit. Okay, let's go ahead and look at a few other things in here. If you do a find, you're going to need to run the report button in order to make the uh, header show back up in here. So that's kind of important. And uh, the other things that are in here, that like this says production ID 111, you can tell that they are what production order and the production ID for that particular item is. In this case is uh, quantity, uh, this is the production ID 4, that's the production quantity there, two and one, okay? That's the actual production ID for those particular items. All produced, there's three different runs of those. And you change records, you can go through each one of them. You can see that they they highlight individually so you know which record you're viewing. And edit the record if you want to go to a particular record, you click on edit and that's the record you're going to be viewing and the information within that record. And you can see the differences between the individual records that were created. Okay, I'm going to point out, we're going to leave the production, but I want to point out some changes that were made kind of late in the design. And that is that we changed the way that the product labels work. And it's just slight change, but I'm going to show you that. There is a product ID select over here. And if I go into the find mode and I click on this, what we've done is made a drop down to make it easier to use so you don't have to pull from memory or whatever. In this particular case, this is the product ID on each one of these and that would be then the actual product that's being produced. So if you scroll down in here and say you want to look for maybe this one and then you go ahead and say perform the find, flip over, that is the item by the item ID that you actually have up here is going to be shown here and then you can print that particular item. Now these are still one-off labels that you're printing and then sticking onto either another label or onto the product itself. And of course, there are the same things going for the barcode versions. Here's the barcode version. And you'll see that when I did it for one, I got it for all. This is ID2. And if I go to the next one, it's again ID2 for the barcode. So anytime you do a look in one, you can go through all of them and maybe print maybe a barcode version or a plain text version like the one up here is with the plain text label if you want to. It's your choice. And the difference between the label 1 and 2 is they are different size in the print area. So you have to be aware of that. This one's going to be the smaller one, and then the larger one is going to be the number 2. It's just a slight bit bigger. Okay, and also you can have, uh, uh, obviously, if you want to move through the different records, you'll notice that this says inventory when you go to between the records, and the label up here says production. And the production takes you to one screen and the inventory takes you to the inventory screen. Now, if you want to look at the barcode, that's going to be an inventory item. If you want to look at just the text view, it's going to take you back to the production screen. Okay. So if this answers all your questions or you run into other questions, you can always go back. In this case, I would go over to the actions and click on dev support and go to the developer website. <clears throat> and I warn you, it takes maybe 15 or 20 seconds to open the screen on the developer site because there's so many graphics being opened when you open the website. So don't click off of it before it opens. It's not going to it's not going to pop up directly on your screen unless you have something like I do. I do. I have a VPN and it makes it a lot faster to run the uh the uh internet and pop up things on the internet screen. Okay, so I uh, hope you learned how to use this if you don't get in contact with us for any questions you may have. Thank you.